one. All right, it's a kid nuts. Goodbye, Reezer, until season three. Man, I can't believe we're going to have to wait so many years for a season three to come out. Who knows when the announcement date is going to be, but it is what it is. Everything good has to come to an end. Give it to me, Mr. Echidnut. Akachan? <laughs> Sano's moldy goat. What the hell? Also, I love. I appreciate the Mori. I appreciate that you are the father. You are gonna make a great single mother. As he grabs a passport, that's puck. That's some puck behavior. Happy ReZero Day, everyone. Hopefully that wasn't the last time I'll ever get to say that, but I'm a kid nut. This is my final weekly video for ReZero Season 2. <sighs> All good things must come to an end, but nah, nah, man. Three years ago, that was three years ago, and now he gonna be back pumping out that Season 3 content tomorrow, bro. 90 minute episode. And I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Emilia's imaginary pregnancy was a hilariously adorable misunderstanding. However, it also reveals a pretty interesting development as well. All Subaru wanted was a little tongue action, but Emilia thought he was trying to become her life partner. Yet, she didn't stop him. So by allowing- Yeah, that, that gives it even more context, right? And this plus the kiss of death as well, and what that means about how that creepy Emilia wanted Subaru's babies at that time. But yeah, it, this was not like- Dodge this if you don't want this. It's like, if you if you don't want kids, dodge, right? That's what this was. It's not just a kiss. This is literally like, oh my god. You gonna make me pregnant? Allowing him to kiss her without protection, I might add. Amelia essentially made the decision to start yep. a family with Subaru. Mm -hmm. And remember at the time, he wasn't even sure if Amelia liked him or not. Entirely unaware that she was willing to have kids with him. I wonder if she thought her hand got pregnant in season one. That's so true! Yo, what about this? Julia's kissing Amelia. What does that mean for her hand? Oh my god. When Subaru's done spamming the same ability over and over, he combos with Amelia and Beatrice, and with the power of friendship, they were able to get rid of the rabbits even without the holy hand grenade. After Subaru's gate collapsed, the holy what? Friendship, they were able to get rid of the rabbits even without the holy hand grenade. After Subaru's gate collapsed, we thought he would never be able to use magic again. But this episode proved Vehicle's us wrong. Gate. Subaru can still use magic by borrowing the gate of his contract spirit. That's right. The only problem is Beatrice ran out of mana, and this entire time she's been secretly stealing mana from everyone in the mansion 400 years of mana that's it guys we're never seeing this shit again we're, we're never seeing this shit again that's it 400 years of stockpiling mana into this thing al shamak everything was great and now subaru and Biaku are useless during the war unless the, all we need is a source of mana right this is so funny because even Without the limitation of mana in that episode, I was like, huh, I bet he can only use Biko like this when he's like in contact with her because his gate is broken and he must be borrowing Biko's power. So therefore, in season three, there's going to be situations where Top Table creates scenarios where Biko and Subaru will be separated no matter what to nerf him. But if that wasn't enough, it's like there's also no mana left, meaning we need another source of mana and then Biko and Subaru also needs to be in contact. So like... Instead of just like Subaru and Biko holding hands, we need another hand holder. We need another lolly. Straight up, we just need a lo another lolly that it's just a battery. Just mana battery, and we hold on to that one hand. And the right hand, we have Biko, and the left hand, we have a lolly battery. And then, then we can overcome the gate and the lack of mana. Healing mana from everyone in the mansion. Be he can't even make contract with lesser spirits, too. That's the thing. Biko literally monopolizes like some sort of. Like, uh, like, there's like a maximum space occupation of like how many spirits you can take in. Biko basically 100% maxed out Subaru's like inventory space. That's it. So we're fucked. We're, we're literally just cooked. Because she can't generate it on her own. This is cut content, by the way. There was a lot of it this episode. And if ReZero does get a season three, it's important that we understand Beatrice can't just create mana like other spirits do. I know it's rather- Because she's an artificial spirit? But isn't Puck as well, if we we're going to assume that Puck was created by Echidna, but that might not be the case, right? There's like an organic greater spirit, but Biko was like an artificial spirit. 
people are able to just like spirits are able to like use the mana in the atmosphere, the 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 exterior. But Biko, no, Biko can't. I don't know how this works. Rather convenient for Beatrice to get nerfed immediately after forming a contract with Subaru, but I want to clarify that she's far from useless. There's many different ways Beatrice could receive mana, and as a last resort, she can still forcefully take mana from everyone around her. But okay, that's possible too. So that's gonna be kind of fucked up. <laughs> I, 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 that makes a lot of sense, right? In Arc Two as well, immediately we were shown a quote-unquote funny scene where the drill lolly corrects Subaru, but. That was mana being like sucked out, right? So Biko can get mana from other sources. It's just this nerf as we go into the war. Like I had a lot of confidence going into season three because of what we saw in the finale, but now it's like shit from everyone around her. But the most practical solution would be for Subaru to just carry around a bunch of mana crystals to recharge Beatrice whenever she's low on battery. I didn't know that was possible. That's pretty cool. The reason she. <laughs> Come on, man. Ran out of mana is because Al Shamak is one of the most powerful spells, if not the most powerful spell in ReZero. It's yeah. the ultimate manifestation of shadow magic, and casting it requires such a massive amount of power and mana that this may have been the only time it's ever been used in history. Even really? And Al Shamak is not simply AoE debuff, curing blind and berserk onto these, you know, rabbits, right? It's also this space dimension ripple as well. Requires such a massive amount of power and mana that this may have been the only time it's ever been used in history. Even Roswell, the mightiest magic user in the world, could never possibly cast it. The only reason Beatrice was able to is because hidden knowledge of mother. Because her entire life was spent stockpiling mana alone in the library. It practically took Beatrice 400 years to cast one spell. And while it sucks, we still did take out the rabbit, quote unquote, take out, right? It's not that the rabbits are just completely gone from existence like the whale. It's just that they're eating each other. And I don't think they're going to continue to eat each other. Like one is going to survive no matter what. And they're going to keep reproducing. But like they're in like a different dimension. So for now, it's good. Al Shamak involves the creation of an isolated space. If you're familiar with MMOs, it basically sends the target to an instance. Or maybe the shadow realm would be better because it's shadow magic. You know, be fucked up. <laughs> If we could always on command to send other people to that realm, but the realm is always just bunnies in there. So now basically we've created the shadow realm where instead of just throwing people away to a different dimension, they'll be thrown to the bunny realm. It's like, yo, you're going to go eat my fucking, you're you going to be food for my bunnies. But the great rabbit isn't dead. It's just permanently banished to another dimension. Yeah. All right, fine. I'll say it. The great rabbit got isekai. True. And is there a potential, like... I don't think we should ever summon them like Pokemon though, right? Because if even one gets out, it's going to start infinitely fucking reproducing. Like, that's not good. We, we cannot do anything like that. But, it, again, it's just funny if you think about if we could just continuously like send opponents into the bunny realm. <laughs> it's just, just that's fucked up. <laughs> Roswell's reunion with Beatrice was nice, but obviously she was upset to learn he'd been lying to her for 400 years. Last episode, Beatrice appeared in Roswell's eye reflection, but Roswell wouldn't appear in hers. How That's right. That's such a significant thing in ReZero, where basically eye reflection, if someone is present, that means that person has accepted them. Like Amelia's eye suddenly showing Subaru at the end of season one. Hints that like Amelia has accepted her, him. However, this week she finally accepts him and they poetically reunite in the same sanctuary they used to consider their home. <laughs> Petra wasn't as forgiving though. A wet towel slapping across Roswell's face yeah. is a visual I'll never forget. Petra was goaded for that and then she went to double down saying I will never forgive my employer based Petra. Watching everyone take turns beating him was almost as satisfying as the boat from school days. The subtitles might have been a bit confusing. What is that reference? Beating him was almost as satisfying as the boat from School Days. I hear School Days is a very fucked up anime at the end. Like some just like like the, the craziest shit just happens. Boat from School Days, huh? <laughs> Will we watch this anime one day? <laughs> like I, I hear like the ending is just like, what the hell? Like it was just like the biggest just mind fuck, what is happening? The subtitles might have been a bit confusing, so to put it simply, Roswell reveals that he secretly formed a contract when he made the bet with Subaru. If mm. Subaru lost and tried to break the bet, his punishment would persist across timelines because the contract was connected to his soul. But Damn. Anything bound to a soul, right? Return by death, 
doesn't matter. That's not flesh. That's soul, right? So we would have been so fucked if we lost this bet. Despite that, Roswell increases the pressure for Subaru by promising to ruin the entire timeline should Subaru make even a slight mistake. That's right. This is not if I lost. It's if you lost anyone. I would not hesitate to reduce anything to ashes. I don't know what anyone really means. Maybe it's just specifically, specifically talking about the key members of the Amelia camp right now, but Roswell is down to just end it, bro. Pretty passive aggressive if you ask me, but without his gospel, Roswell has no- Imagine this is Omega. Ima imagine this is Omega right now. Because like, I wonder what color jacket she's wearing. Is, is Omega wearing a white jacket? Maybe. Me, but without his gospel, Roswell has no choice but to follow Subaru for guidance, so from now on, everything has to be perfect. Even after losing both the gospel and the bet, Roswell still achieved his objective this season. It didn't happen how he wanted it to, but one way or another, the Sanctuary's liberation allowed him to collect Echidna's remains. I've read many of your comments discussing how Echidna's face was hidden during the flashbacks from when mm -hmm. she was alive. Well, fine. I thought that was basically to imply that Echidna is being very sinister, and if we were to see her true face here, then it would be her smirking with like an evil smile. That's why in the flashbacks, when she was like quote unquote grooming Ryuzu, Roswell, Biko, at the end of the day, thank you, Ray Shadows, for the sub, man. I, I thought that like this is just that, just hiding Echidna's sinister presence finally i can tell you it's because the echidna from 400 years ago looks different than the one we're familiar with so this is again not nose simply just growing right there's there's something crazy going on here the ending of this video was very confusing but at the end of the day echidna is out yep echidna is out under the vessel ryuzu and she is omega now years ago looks different than the one we're familiar with. Apparently, our Echidna isn't really Echidna, but instead, the Witch of Greed. Which is so confusing, but Satala also is separate from the Witch of Envy due to the incompatibility with the Witch Factors, and now we're supposed to believe that the Witch of Greed that we've known is different from the Echidna that is the body, right? So, that's the confusing thing about ReZero. You, you just assume that because like, they have a name, Tifon, the Witch of Pride, are they the same person? I'm supposed to believe so, but right now the Witch of Greed and Echidna, they're not the same. What exactly that means, I don't really know. It sounds oddly similar to the situation with Satella, aside from the two Echidnas having different appearances. That's the one part that doesn't make sense to me, but I'm guessing there wasn't literally two separate Echidnas, but instead something happened that created two different versions of the same Echidna. I yeah, and I wonder if this is all for the clever trick, right? Echidna claims that she had a clever trick. Something to surpass Volcanica Seal. She is now literally walking out of this cave like Jesus Christ, just resurrected, but in Ryuzu's body, right? I think this was the result of something changing after she died, possibly related to how she died. It's hard to say for sure, but if you guys have any thoughts or theories, I'd be happy to read them in the comments. If you want my honest opinion though, two echidnas isn't nearly enough. Live echidnas, dead echidnas, possessed lollies, mythical creatures, characters from Sonic, scarfs, figures, animals, I want as many echidnas as possible. The exact number of echidnas in the world should match the number of likes in this video. I That's a lot of likes. 23,000 echidnas. I apologize in advance for sounding like a salty novel reader, but I was very surprised that they decided to cut my favorite chapter in the entire novel from this episode. Oh it my confused God. me because while most of the season- Based. There's no way this is authentic. There's no way this is real. He edited this shit in, but based. Also, this should be on September a different date, a date that I was banned. Since cut content has been very minimal, for some reason they omitted what was potentially the greatest cliffhanger of all time. Shima said she was not lonely these past 10 years Be because of Garfield. But like, again, now, Echidna, Omega, tell me. I'm going to assume and hope that the reason for this is because they plan on using it in the season three trailer or perhaps the season two director's cut. Okay. It would be an unforgivable mistake to not adapt the very last chapter of the Sanctuary. Under the moon. Haphazard steps, right? Haphazard steps as, you know, the girl comes out of the cave, stepping out 
chapter of the Sanctuary arc, and I do have faith that White Fox wouldn't be so foolish. So because I'm expecting to see this scene in the future, I'm not going to spoil it in this video. However, I would like- there, There's a separate video we'll watch for that. Like ...to talk about it in a separate video, yeah. probably later this week. If that's something you're interested in seeing, make sure Hell you subscribe yeah. to be notified when it happens. For now, though, I thoroughly enjoyed this incredible season of ReZero. This episode was such a nice conclusion to my favorite arc of the story, and the highlight was obviously this noise Beatrice made at the beginning. Minya. <laughs> It was pretty clear that the budget for the rabbit fight was given to the celebration scene at the end, which in my opinion was a lot more important. After watching all these characters suffer episode after episode, it felt so good seeing everyone enjoying themselves. Mm -hmm. This season, Subaru learned many lessons, but in the end, his most important discovery was Drip. Looking fresh as hell, Subaru finally becomes Amelia's knight, and That's I gotta right. admit, if I wasn't a novel reader, I might have been worried about his head getting chopped off. Dude, again, like if Amelia accidentally like severed Subaru's head here and he returned by that, that would have been so troll. The novel reader, I might have been worried about his head. That should be an abridged episode, right? Like this is easy abridged content right here. People could meme about that so much. Getting chopped off. Everything went smoothly though, and Subaru promises to consummate his knighthood with Amelia. And you're right, he is also a spirit knight, just like Julius, right? When we return, Julius Euclius will be like, God damn, bro, what the hell? You a spirit knight like me? Yeah, later that night. If you're wondering why Otto looks absolutely obliterated, it's because today, March 24th, is Otto's birthday, so oh. of course he's hammered. Rare, happy moments like these are always a treat in such an otherwise brutal anime. Petra Biko hanging out is so cute, right? Because it was hinted though, like, oh, Petra, you should hang out with Biko. Subaru just said that because, like, they look similar, like a, like a lolly. Subaru definitely deserves to be Amelia's knight, and even though there's still the royal selection, the witch cult, and Satella, this episode felt like it could have been the ending of the entire series. And I guess it really could be if season three never gets announced. I hope I'll get to say this again soon, but this was another 10, 10 out, out of 10, 10 episode. Wonder if he's gonna do that. He'll definitely do that. It's been three years, but I'm sure he remembers all the stuff, the stuff that he used to do back in season two. So like starting tomorrow, whenever he makes a new video, right? <laughs> 10 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you impregnate the like button. A lot of effort goes into these weekly videos or I guess went into them. I actually do need to wrap. Yes, sir. A lot of effort is put into these weekly videos and I, a lazy reactor, can simply just watch it on stream and make money off of it. So please, guys, go to his channel. Here's a link. Like the video, sub to his channel if you haven't. Round of applause for a kid that we're not done yet though. There's so much more ReZero videos from this channel that we're gonna farm. But thank you so much for all the season two cut content as well as review analysis you've given us. Now we're gonna check out this last video where how season two really ends. Omega stuff. Real ones know what that's about. I'll see you there.